Morning in YouTube, Matt M. Roy back once again, March 3rd, 2020, here in Southern Virginia, a beautiful day here in Southern Virginia, actually did not get a lot of sleep last night, but that's okay, I go through these stages where I sleep a lot and I don't sleep a lot, got a lot happening today, got somebody coming to pick up a uh, computer here in a few minutes, uh, Milo is being a, his usual stinker of a self. He's been clawing at my couch, and now he's sitting in the window. So let me turn you guys around and give you guys a feline update. All right, so if you look at my couch here, you can see where Milo has been a very bad boy. He likes to kind of claw this here. I've been trying to cut these little sh uh, strands that are out, but he keeps getting at it. I think I'm going to have to get some of the spray. You can actually buy spray at the grocery store that has a smell and you just spray it kind of like you would for breeze and it deters cats from clawing at uh, furniture but as you can see that's the only spot that he actually claws are you being a naughty boy Milo hey Milo you being naughty kitty <whistles> oh he sees something out there what you see what you see bud what's out there I don't see anything out there. Oh, yep, there we go. We got some birds right near the mailbox. <gasps> birds are flying away, Milo. You gonna talk to those birds? Yeah, talk to those birdies. You are such a little stinker, Milo. Okay, so a bunch of you have asked me, Matt, why in the world are you not wearing your glasses anymore, right? Because I've worn glass since I was about two years old. Well, there's a good reason for that. Ever since I went on my diet slash lifestyle change and lost all the weight, my eyes have actually gotten better. I've gotten to the point where I don't even need to wear them. Matter of fact, I noticed that wearing my glasses, they were actually hindering my depth perception. I was having a very hard time uh, judging how far or how near things were to me. So the last, I would say, two or three days, I just decided to take my glasses off altogether and I'm actually seeing pretty well. Now, I don't have perfect vision. Um, this left eye is like 2040. This one used to be like 2200, but now it's gotten down to where it's like 2080. Um, but it's good enough for me to get by. I really just don't want to have to wear the glasses anymore either. Um, not that it's a vanity thing. I know all you guys out there are probably saying, oh, Matt, you just don't want to look geeky. You don't want to have the four eyes. No. It's just I really don't even need them anymore, so that is awesome. If those of you out there that are trying to follow my diet slash lifestyle change, great benefit. Every part of your body uh, benefits. Your eyes, your feet, your arms, everything starts to look better and actually starts to feel better. Well, I need to go ahead and pause this because my person is going to be here in a few minutes. We'll see what the rest of the day brings, and I'll talk to everybody on the flip side. All right. So I want to give these Western Digital caddies another chance. Those of you that saw the live stream the other day noticed that I did a um, benchmark on these with the PNY 240 gig uh, SSD. Put it in the caddy. I wanted to see if it, somebody suggests that this would degrade the performance of it. And that one it sure did actually it got about 50 percent of the speed that they would normally give in other words instead of getting 450 i would normally get megabits read per second read and maybe 450 write i was getting more like 250 read and write but that was with a cheap hp um pavilion that i had I have now since used one of these with the exact same SSD, so same SSD, same caddy, and put it in one of my Dell Optiplex 3020s, one of the good ones. We're going to go ahead and open up Crystal Disk Mark, and we're going to run another test with this computer, because I want to see if it makes a difference, if maybe the whole problem was that cheap HP. So let's go ahead and click All, and you and I will find out together if indeed this is better or not. 
Fingers crossed. Bam. Look at that, folks. Look at those read speeds. Now this is uh this is uh sequential. Yeah, this is sequential, but still not not bad at all. We've got 557.23 megabytes a second, which is about what I would expect from uh this SSD. Actually, a little bit better to be honest with you because this SSD is only rated at what is it? 535. <laughs> So that is actually very, very impressive, to be perfectly honest with you. Now I think we're down to the um, A sequential at 420. Yeah, Vast is bugging me. Let me close out of that real quick. Check that out, folks. 434. I'm going to go ahead and pause this real quick, and I'll give you guys the results once it finishes. Okay, so we just finished the read tests on this ssd and i have to say that is really impressive uh that bottom number at 33.72 that's pretty typical for this test um what was it Sequ sequential and these two are like a sequential reads and now we're over to the right speeds and look at that the right speeds are right up there too what is that 483.11 485.45 megabytes a second that is impressive, especially considering we're using this Caddy, which technically was not even really designed for a solid-state hard drive. I mean, all this really is is an adapter that'll take a 2.5-inch laptop-style hard drive and turn it into a 3.5-inch desktop hard drive. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitively going to say that my problem was actually that crappy HP. So, Stephen Barber... If you uh, see this video, you are totally right, buddy. I was totally wrong. Um, but look at that. Those speeds are so impressive. I mean, look at that. Look at that. We're actually getting a higher write speed than a read speed. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, that is not something I would have expected from using one of these caddies. So, folks, don't worry about it. If you need to go ahead and get an adapter for your solid-state hard drive to put it in a desktop... I highly recommend getting one of these. These are just these Western Digital branded adapters. And I'll go ahead and give you guys, if I can, if my hand will start working, a close-up. These are model, what is it, 705-234-AB, TB1G. These are actually ones that they use in uh, servers, believe it or not. I mean, these things are beefy, too. These are all metal. So we're about to finish the test up here. Wow, that's insane. We're actually getting better speeds on the write column versus the read column. I mean, that is incredible. So that is the end result right there, folks. All right, let me go ahead and pause this because my person should be here any minute. And we'll see what the rest of the day brings. And I'll talk to everybody in just a little while. Oh, boy, folks. We're back with two cats now. What you guys doing? You guys hear the birds? Hey, Baxt. What's up? You don't want to be there? Okay. Well, tell everybody what you were doing this morning. Matt's trying to work on his computers. And you're right in his face, but he's too cute. We can't punish him. He's just too cool for school. All right, Milo, go chase those birds. We'll catch up with you maybe later on in this vlog. All right, everybody. So my person rescheduled for noon, so I thought I'd go ahead and show you the new monitor setup for the Dell XPS 8700. Um, I spent about mm, two hours yesterday setting this up. What I now have are two very, very nice HP 24F. 24-inch 1080p Full HD IPS displays. Now, I have just the two. Some people like to have three, but two monitors are good enough for me. I just love the way these are almost bezel-less. You can see just how little of a bezel it has on top and on the sides. Really, the only bezel is on the bottom. I went ahead and did my best to cable management. You can see back there, I tried to zip tie as much as possible. Um, and I'm still using my Logitech K750 um, solar keyboard here. I do still have my Logitech uh, MK500 keyboard down here, but I don't really use that as much. 
Um, it's starting to wear out. Some of the keys don't quite work properly anymore. So pretty much I just use this. Got my Yeti microphone here, which when I do the live streams, you'll usually see is right in front of my face. But I just have to say I love the way these displays look here. It's almost perfect, honestly. I know, I'm kind of picky like that, but it's it's good. Believe me, it's good. The only problem I had was getting the webcam to stay because there's so little of a bezel here. I had to try and get it to stay up as high as possible because if you're not careful, it'll push down over the display like that. So I kind of just got to go real easy and make sure it stays just like there because if this part goes down too much, then it covers the top portion of the display. Kind of got to play around with it a little bit more, but it works for now. If you look under here, yes, I cleaned up a lot of my cables. I used to have cables strewn all over the back there. It's not perfect, folks. I am not an expert organizer, but it is a heck of a lot better than it used to be. I went and dusted and vacuumed all the way back there. I went ahead and I moved my external hard drives, which used to be right up there behind the monitors, kind of right where those two speakers are. I know, right, not a great place to be, especially considering the speakers have magnets, but I went ahead and stuck those right up here. Should be enough airflow. I went ahead and removed the back cover to this um, little uh, cabinet here, so there's a good amount of airflow going back to forward. And once again, pretty much cleaned up all the wiring back there. You can see a few odd wires, but again, a heck of a lot better than it was. Wow, I have to tell you folks, just sitting here looking at this display, it's so much better. It's clear, it's crisp, and it is a lot easier on my eyes. Talk to you guys in a few. All right, everybody, checking out this gorgeous day here in Southern Virginia. Give you an update on the Tahoe. I finally was able to come out yesterday and caulk the windshield. I didn't know if it was going to work or not, folks, because it was nice yesterday, but there was a chance of rain. So let me show you the problem I've been having. Um, I did an okay job, but you can see this gasket up here. This was all cracked, and it was almost totally gone. So I went, and I went to Home Depot, and I bought some black uh, exterior caulk and a caulking gun, as they call it, and I went and just caulked all the way around the top of the windshield and I even did a little bit down here now got to be careful because believe it or not wow this isn't even totally dry yet so I got to be really careful this is still pretty pliable now once it dries I'm going to go take a utility knife and I'm going to go ahead and clean it up there a little bit just to kind of make it look a little nicer but I did the both sides here and then the top of the windshield and uh, yeah you can see the birds kind of tagged my uh, roof there my next project is going to be, I want to go ahead and um, paint the hood and the roof again because I've never touched the hood. The hood is faded from time. I mean, this is a 24-year-old vehicle. And the roof I did, the roof I actually spray painted, believe it or not, flat black. But what I want to do is I want to go to Home Depot and I want to get a semi-gloss. I'm going to go ahead and roll the, the hood and the roof. I'm basically just going to literally roll the paint on there. And I want to see, I think that's going to look really good. And I'm going to leave the sides glossy because a lot of you have told me that you like that kind of transition from the matte to the gloss. So that's what I think I'm going to do. And again, if you look on the side here, um, you can see that I did this one too. I really messed this up here though. I'll have to, uh, oh wow, yeah, you can kind of see that. I'll have to scrape that back later. Actually, I could probably just pull that off, but if you look closely, you can see that the uh, the caulk isn't quite dry yet. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone. Ugh, got that all over my fingers. Um, my person's not coming till uh, around noon time, so got a little bit more time to think about what I want to do. Um, the tires on here seem to be doing okay, though during the winter, the front two tires for some reason keep leaking air. This one much slower. Actually, the passenger side tire is even worse. Let's see how that one's doing this morning. Eh, and even that doesn't look too bad. So uh, it might just be a winter thing. I know when it's cold out, sometimes the beads around the tire doesn't seal properly. And um, 
I can cause air to seep out, but his tires are good. They still have plenty of meat left on them. They're all the same tires, but oddly enough, these are from 2013, the two front tires, and the two back ones are from 2015, so we must have got them at different times, but as you can see, definitely got plenty of tread still left on there, and I'm not really in a market to buy new tires for this because, again, it, it is a 20, almost 25-year-old vehicle. Got my bike rack here on the back. This I haven't been using lately, but since uh, the weather's broke, I'm definitely going to. This is that Thule bike rack that I picked up um, at a garage sale last year for like 20 bucks. I love this thing. And it was so funny. When I went to get my Yukon worked on, he showed me a trick. I used to have to take this off to open the tailgate on this and the Yukon. Check this out, folks. I never noticed this when I first got it. You can pull this pin out here, right? See if I can do this one-handed. Yeah, come on, there we go. And you can go ahead and lower the entire bike rack down. And I don't know why I never noticed that, but that allows me to get into the tailgate, both when it's on here and on the Yukon. All right, folks, I'm going to pause the vlog and I'll talk to you guys a little bit later on. All right, everybody, it is 12.07. Yep, Mom and I are on the uh, Suffolk Seaboard Coastline Trail. We just took a, well, probably an eight-mile bike ride. Back and forth. Back and forth. It's 12, so yeah. we've probably done about six miles so far. We're taking a break here at the uh, driver's side, and it is nice today, though it is extremely windy, wouldn't yes. you say? Yes. It's hard to ride when it's windy like this. Yeah, definitely it's a lot of is. Energy. Yeah, so I'm going to have to pause this because guess what? I forgot to bring my battery bank, and uh, I'm starting to lose battery power on my phone. So uh, we're going to go and finish our exercises today. Um, probably not going to be too much more today, but I will have something to show you guys sure, when I get back home. Beaver or something. It was two ducks. <laughs> All right, everybody. So we're at our end of the trail. Uh, my bike's sitting right there. Mom's is here. And uh, we just needed to take a break, right? Yeah, because we have to go up the overpass, and that takes some energy, especially if you do it in the wind. So yeah. I want to take a little bit of a break. And my back's kind of hurting me right now, so we decided to sit on the bench here. Yeah. Sounds like, uh, I don't know what that is, one of the trains? Sounds like maybe one of the trucks backing up. You know, there's a, there's a uh, warehouse thing there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there's like a um, dish. Uh, distribution. depot distribution yeah. depot thank you i couldn't think of it but um yeah we're doing all right we probably about 10 miles in right now this is our third day of biking you know we biked sand sunday yesterday and today that's right so tomorrow is a walking day tomorrow sure. will be a walking day yeah we got to give our bodies a rest because what actually hurts is your lower back yeah that's when you bike a lot day. yeah but you guys can see how windy it is here look at the trees doesn't look that bad, but when you're riding against, the, against a little bit of wind, it's tough. Look at the sawgrass. You can see it on the sawgrass a lot. You know what that is? It's um, bamboo. Oh, that's right. That's bamboo. There's it's a little bit of sawgrass invasive. back it's very there. Very invasive here. Oh, there might be some back there. Usually that doesn't come up till the spring. Mm. But the, the uh, bamboo is extremely invasive here. It's all in the woods. Yeah, it is. It's a real pain around here. You got to keep cutting it back, cutting it back, cutting it back, but it'll come yeah. back every single year. All right, YouTube, back home. It is 1.30, and I'm going to end the vlog here. The rain is coming. I've got a few things I need to do before that happens. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Yep, you can uh, leave me here with my helmet hair. Yeah, probably need to get a haircut soon. All right, everybody, please continue like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.